Good morning, everyone. I'm Bobby Robbins, the president of the University of Arizona, and this is Dr. Liesl Folks, who is the provost at the University of Arizona. And we're coming to you live from atop of Arizona Stadium on a beautiful Tucson morning. You can hear the bell from the uh, union chiming in the background, maybe. <clears throat> this is my first Facebook uh, Live. Liesl did one, if you saw her uh, in uh, Kendall Washington White, uh, uh, maybe a few days ago or last week. Yeah. Uh, and she is a Facebook Live star, so I'm, <laughs> I'm just her sidekick here today. Uh, but we wanted to spend a few minutes with you, and thank you for all of you who are uh, hopefully trapped at home uh, in front of your computer like we all are. We got special dispensation to get out of our homes to come over and, mm -hmm. and do this for you. Uh, but we wanted to just spend a few minutes with you trying to answer as many questions as we can and update you on how things are going at the University of Arizona. First of all, things are going very well here. Weather is beautiful. Uh, the team has come together. Uh, all of our lives changed. Uh, seems like overnight. It's only been a couple of weeks now since uh, uh, we were at the Pac-12 basketball conference looking forward to March Madness and everything changed. Uh, we were on spring break at that point, and uh, unfortunately, we made the tough decision that we were going to cancel uh, in-person, on-campus classes and go all digital for the rest of the semester. And we encouraged all of the students, uh, for, for you parents, uh, all of your uh, children to either return to home or not come back to campus. Um, I, I hate that that this has happened uh, because I love uh, walking out on campus and seeing students everywhere, walking around, going to classes, uh, visiting with each other and having a great time. It's actually kind of lonely around here. We have about 500 students who uh, either had nowhere to stay and we of course kept the university open with all services to be able to support our students with, uh, with housing, with food services, uh, and things that they may need locally. Healthcare. Healthcare, for sure. We've got one of the top five uh, healthcare uh, clinics for any university in the country, and I'm very proud of the job that we've done. We've, we're seeing students uh, on a daily basis. Um, we have test kits, so we're able to test those symptomatic uh, students. Um, the first thing I want to say is take this seriously. This is a very, very serious crisis. Um, here in Arizona, we've been blessed not to have as many cases as in California, in New York City, which looks like the epicenter. Uh, obviously, China, South Korea, Iran, Italy. New Orleans is the latest hotspot, probably related to the activities surrounding Mardi Gras. Uh, but this is a nationwide epidemic, pandemic, uh, and we're in crisis mode. So I would encourage each of you, I know you have to go to the grocery store, uh, um, make sure you wash your hands, use hand sanitizers, stay away from people. Um, I, I love some of the things I've been seeing. We're coming very close together as a, as a country, and certainly I can say at the University of Arizona, we're coming closer together by staying further apart. Assume you've got it. Assume everybody you come into contact with has the virus and only by our nation really sheltering in place, uh, not just social distancing, but isolation. Uh, now this counts because if you can reach out and we're not touching each other, that's probably pretty safe because this is a, a virus that's transmitted by respiratory droplets. And uh, so wash your hands. I can't say that enough. Stay away from people, stay in your home, uh, try not to go outside, at least for the next two, three, four weeks. Uh, that's a tall order, and uh, that causes all of us to get a little stir-crazy, um, to, uh, to become isolated, to become lonely, anxious about not knowing what the future holds, depressed. For our students, uh, we've got great mental, uh, mental health services, either in person, on campus, uh, for those students are online uh, and we've got great telemedicine options 
for not only physical but uh, the mental anguish and toll that this uh, that this crisis is is causing. We're going to get through this. We're going to be better for it. The University of Arizona has come together, and I'm so proud of all of the staff who are literally working around the clock uh, to keep the university open, uh, to make that incredible transition from a large AAU public university to going online, literally within a matter of a week. And Liesl has been uh, leading the effort here at the university, uh, and she's done an incredible job, but it's been a team effort. Uh, our professors, many of whom have taught online, many of whom have never taught online. And uh, the services that were provided to them, the support to be able to transition into a curriculum that served our students has been uh, simply tremendous. Um, at this point, I'm gonna stop talking, but take it seriously. Uh, and uh, we've got great health care providers in this country. Uh, we're the most uh, innovative country in the world. We need to start acting like it uh, and start getting masks and protective equipment uh, and medicines and things that our physicians need. But unless we all per participate in this isolation, uh, we're never going to get a hold on this and we'll, we will turn into the next Italy. Uh, I'm confident we're going we're gonna to get a hold on this. Uh, the governors, the mayors, the uh, county supervisors and commissioners have done a great job here in Tucson. Uh, we've got a uh, you know, stay-at-home policy. All the restaurants are closed, only takeout. Um, so we're, we're doing quite well here, and we're looking forward to our students coming back in the fall. I can't guarantee that, that that'll happen unless we get a handle on this. And we'll listen to the medical professionals and the policy people. But uh, for right now, our summer session, uh, we're gonna, we've already made the decision. It'll be an all digital format. Uh, but I'm hoping and planning for the fall that students come back. Uh, we derive great joy into literally physically helping students uh, move into their dorms. Uh, help them get situated, make that transition from leaving home or coming back from home to campus. And, and I always ask every student, uh, where are you from? What year are you? What, what uh, are you majoring in? And why in the world did you choose the University of Arizona? And, and I get incredible joy out of listening to their stories and to tell them that we're all here to help them realize their hopes and dreams. So, Liesl, I don't know if you've got a few opening statements or if you want to well, go right to the questions. I but think I only want to say two things straight off the bat. One is I'm extremely grateful to have a doctor as uh, the leader of our university at this time. Um, I think that President Robbins has really inspired an enormous amount of support from across the campus because he is able to speak with the authority of the profession in trying to keep us all safe. Please, please listen to the health directives that are being issued by the university, but of course also by your state and local governments and federal governments. It's tremendously important that we all do our part to stop the spread of this disease as quickly as possible. Um, and then I also want to add my thanks to everybody in the community that has pulled together to make this, this pivot of this massive institution on a dime to delivering everything we do uh, via digital means so that our students can keep on learning because our faculty have kept on teaching. My highest aspiration and goal and the, the um, principle to which all decisions are being aligned um, is that we want all of our students to complete their, their courses this semester and continue along in their studies and not have COVID-19 destroy their academic aspirations and their plans for the future. And everything we're doing supports that goal and that ambition. Um, Bobby, I know that many of our students are worried about graduation. Many of our seniors, I should say, are worried and understandably so. Uh, we very much recognize that graduation is this culminating experience. And to have a glorious celebratory um, event with all of their family and friends with them and it was really disappointing for the campus to hear that we'd made a decision last week that we couldn't plan on having our standard graduation and commencement event. Bobby, can you just talk a little bit about what is in your head about what we're going to do instead and what the team is thinking about there? Yeah, so 
this would have been my third commencement. Uh, Lisa has been to many commencement celebrations, but she's never been to one, one. quite yeah. like <laughs> this stadium behind exactly. uh, the cameras there. Uh, it, it's really a production with fireworks. It's, it's almost like a, a rock concert. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the production company that helps incredible event uh, only does rock concerts and big shows. We're the only commencement uh, event that they do every year, and they just love it. I, I think they're based in Philadelphia, and I know they're disappointed we're not having it. But mostly I am absolutely heartbroken for our seniors um, because they have put in so much work uh, and deserve to be celebrated and recognized. Uh, it's just not going to be the same without commencement in the stadium this year. Um, but we've got options. Uh, we're, we're talking to our students. I, I talk to as many students <coughs> as I can to get their opinion about what could we do to make up for this. There's, there's nothing that can ever replace that event. Um, I said last year it was my second one and I hope to be here for the third one. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make it for the third one, and I'm disappointed. I'm heartbroken because it's such a festive, joyous occasion for uh, their classmates that they've been with and worked so hard with and have made lifelong uh, relationships um, that they'll cherish forever. Uh, and uh, our students' families that can come together, many of which are first generation. Uh, almost a third of our students are first-generation students. So for families to be able to celebrate um, their loved one uh, getting that diploma, dressing in that cap and gown, and I, I was talking to uh, Sydney Hess, who is the president of our uh, undergraduate student body, and, and she said, we need to have some event. Most everybody says uh, uh, they just want to hear uh, uh, me say, you know, could you move your tassel to the other side? Um, and, and, I, and I hate I'm not going to get to do that this year, but we will come up with uh, some creative ways, some digital, virtual ways to celebrate. It won't be the same. We're working on options for in-person celebrations, uh, either around uh, our December commencement, which we have every year, or combining with next year's uh, 2021 class. Many of them are friends that are uh, uh, their junior classmates now. So we're, we're, we haven't finalized anything. We'll continue to get input. We'd love all your input because we read everything you send us. Um, but again, I, I'm, I'm just very disappointed that May 15th uh, we'll, we'll, have a, uh, we'll, we'll have something that we'll be able to celebrate, but it won't be like fireworks in the stadium. It's very sad. So I'm very sorry for that. Yeah. So, um, Bobby, there are lots of questions that have come in that sort of relate to fiscal issues. Um, one of them, which is coming from students and their families, is will we be giving tuition um, refunds on the basis of the fact that we've had to move all our instruction to remote and digital means? And the answer to that, regrettably, is no. And here's the reason why. Our university hasn't been able to realise um, any change in the costs of delivery. In fact, if anything, our costs have gone up as we've pivoted to rapidly being able to deliver all of what was planned for in-person um, instruction here for our main campus uh, courses and, and academic programs to online. We are doing the, our very best to deliver under extremely difficult circumstances, as I'm sure everybody understands. but. In fact, the campus is still operating and is still delivering on our commitments to the best of our ability um, to ensure that our students can complete their courses uh, this semester and continue their academic progress. Um, let me um, just be clear on this point. There are universities that have literally shut down and they have halted instruction because they didn't have the strength that this campus has and the determination that this campus has to continue to deliver for our students. There is no way we want to harm the academic progress and, and do real damage to the academic aspirations of our students by heading in that direction. That's not what we plan to do. So, um, you know, I understand why people have that question, um, but it isn't where we're headed. And um, I hope people will understand 
uh, why that is the answer that we have. There is, however, uh, both a, 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 a refund available for housing and also for parking, um, and uh, the details of that are available online. Um, other questions that are, that are fiscal questions, and this is more to do with what's going on on campus. We've made a commitment to, to the best of our ability, make sure that our student workforce, um, alongside of all of our regular employees, um, are, um, continue to be supported through to the end of semester. In many cases, that means that we're asking people to take on different responsibilities so that they can do their work from home. Uh, we, are, we are really committed to trying to ensure that we are not contributing to the economic uh, harm for our own students and our own workers um, because everybody's feeling anxiety about their fiscal futures right now. Um, as part of that, one of the challenges we know is that for some people, um, working from home seemed viable until the children were sent home from school as well and now they're managing small children at home. This is true for our students as well as our faculty and staff which is complicated matters, we fully understand. If you go to our human resource webpage, it explains how that issue is being managed with as much compassion as we can manage to pull together um, to ensure that people will still continue to, to be paid no matter what the circumstances are that they're enduring to try and get through this extremely challenging time for our community. Um, and then one last one that's related to that. Um, as we adjust to the fiscal realities of, of the harm that's um, being done by, to the nation, but also to our campus, um, as we try and work our way through this very serious challenge, um, one, um, one absolute action that we've put in place is to say that there is a hiring um, slowdown, if not almost complete stop in place. All hires from now forward will need the approval of a senior VP. And this is only to be fiscally prudent. We want to make sure that we're constraining costs to the best extent possible because we don't know how long we are going to be in this difficult circumstance. Um, one of the questions is, does that include replacement hires? Yes, it does. Right now, every single hire will need to be approved by a senior VP just to make sure that we're all doing our part to constrain costs for the whole organization to make sure that we have the, we're as resilient as we can be as an institution to sustain ourselves through this period that is of an uncertain length. I know Bobby and I have frequently talked together about well, how long do we think we're going to be doing this. We know we still have many weeks to go um, before we'll be able to bring the campus out of this position and this operating mode that we're in now. And we know that it's difficult. Uh, we know that if it uh, lasts through the summer, then we're going to see challenges with enrollment and that's also going to harm us fiscally and that'll be a challenge for us to manage. What I can say is we have the most phenomenal team of incredibly creative and inventive um, and, and uh, innovative people working right now on how do we ensure that our revenues and our costs are able to be managed forward through this difficult period to protect our workforce to the best extent we can manage. Um, and that's going to be, we know it's a challenge, but we've got great people working on it. And I ask the campus to be patient with us as we work through those issues. All right, um, so that's that one. Um, Before you leave that, Lisa, it, I, I, you know, I listened to the president <coughs> yesterday say, wouldn't Easter be a great time to reopen the country uh, we, we had initially thought about, well, we'll take a little break, we'll go online for a few weeks, and then everybody will come back sort of mid-April. And I said, that is going to be the absolute peak of this thing. Right. Uh, so as much as I would love to see our churches, our temples, our synagogues, our mosques uh, filled around Easter, that's just not going to happen, in my opinion. Uh, I know Tony Fauci... Uh, he gave a very slick, will be flexible answer yesterday. That's not going to happen. We're going to be at the, at the peak of this uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic uh, at that time. Even saying that I hope that students come back in the fall, uh, nobody knows. I don't know. Nobody knows. If they tell you they know for sure, uh, then, you know, take it with a grain of salt. 
my assumption though is if we all do what we're supposed to do, uh, practice isolation, wash your hands. If you're sick, uh, call your physician, um, get tested. Uh, the number of test kits are gonna increase, but try to do it at a place, uh, particularly Campus Health, we've got a very good uh, uh, system for doing it. If there's a drive-through area that you can get your temperature and swabbed in your community, do that. But, but I do put out there that, you know, end of August, I think that's a realistic time period for us to come back and um, life as normal. What does that really mean? You know, the Olympics were canceled yesterday and someone asked Bob Costas, well, we'll do it in 2021 when everything is normal. And he said, what does normal, normal mean? mean? Because we're into a new normal. And I think you're gonna see uh, universities going to more uh, working for home using Zoom. I've never Zoomed so much in my life as I have in the last week or so. Uh, I think that's actually a good thing and will evolve, but there's nothing like having that on-campus experience. And I really hope Really that we're going to be open uh, in the fall term. Bobby, that uh, segues nicely into a whole pile of questions about summer school. We know that the summer session is really important for many of our students. Um, the decision that we've made right now is that any summer programming that is scheduled um, between now and the 1st of July has to be delivered in an online modality. After the 1st of July, we are planning for face-to-face -face classes and programming to, to resume on campus. But we've also made it clear that we're going to make a decision on the 1st of May about those programs that are after the 1st of July. So anybody that has a program that's due to start after the 1st of July will have um, in their back pocket a plan for what they're going to do if they either have to cancel the activity or pivot to an online modality. A, it's not what anyone wants. Believe me, Bobby and I are completely understanding that there, this is not what anyone wants. But again, we are trying to do our absolute best to keep students moving forward with their academic progress. That, um, the same uh, logic is being applied to summer camps, for example. We normally have a lot of K through 12 activity on our campus through the summer. Um, it is unbelievably painful to us to imagine not having all those wonderful K through 12 kids on our campus in the summer. But right now we're preparing for only starting to see them after the 1st of July. And that's with our most optimistic hat on. Um, and so that's what we're thinking for now, um, for summer. The, um, gosh, what, what should we go to next? Um, hmm, there's a lot of questions. Oh, I would want to tackle one about fees. There have been some questions that have come up um, from students and families about having paid fees on campus for um, the rec centre, for example. I just want to quickly clarify that the fee um, actually uh, goes to rec centre and healthcare. It's one fee. And it is absolutely true that once we've um, shut down the rec centre, Students don't have access to that facility anymore. But let me be really clear, um, the fee money is being uh, spent, as it should be right now, on health health facility. All of our campus health facilities have rapidly ramped up uh, telemedicine capabilities, and I can assure you that the campus community is taking full advantage of the mental health care and the physical health care that the campus uh, health facilities are providing to them now. The campus health unit on campus is, of course, also open for people who need to come in and talk about the, the concerns, the very real concerns that they have that they might be infected with COVID-19. Bobby mentioned testing on campus earlier. We are tremendously proud of the fact that we've been able to ramp up testing for our community, for the campus community, really quickly. We're able to get test results back overnight in almost all cases. Um, Interestingly, um, and as um, has been seen in many other facilities, what we find is um, our campus healthcare professionals are often convinced that they're looking at a case of COVID-19, but the tests are coming back negative, and in fact, the person has picked up influenza somewhere or a different, um, a different affliction. Um, as of right now, we have four members of our campus community who have been tested positive for COVID-19. The um, numbers are going to be updated on our webpage um, every day, 
All four of those people are doing fine. They're all in isolation in their own homes. None of them are in our dormitories. Um, we are very, very comfortable though that we've got a robust system for testing students according to the CDC protocols and according to the protocols that are being implemented nationwide. Um, we're able to get the results back quickly. We're able to give people the medical care and attention that they need at this most stressful time. Um, and that's an important part of where those fee revenues are being directed right now, um, serving our campus community to the best extent that we can manage. Bobby, can you talk a little bit about how our amazing researchers have stepped up in the testing arena and what's been happening on campus with that? Because that's such an amazing story. It is. Um, you know, the, uh, when we saw this coming, uh, the one thing that I was concerned about is I, we really didn't know how many students were going to choose to come back to campus. Right. We have about eight or 9,000 uh, dorm rooms on campus. And then we've got all these uh, high-rise buildings and off-campus right. uh, options for students. So we, we really didn't know how many were going to decide to come back to campus. Uh, one of the things that I think helped that was to uh, just to declare that we were going to go uh, uh, all digital format for the rest of the term. And that allowed people to go back home. I, I do know that oftentimes, um, Students were on spring break, they had to come. I, I went around and talked to many of the students as they were uh, quickly coming by and grabbing things out of their dorm room and, and making a mad, mad dash home. Uh, so uh, I, I was concerned that we needed tests and I was obviously aware of what the, the situation was with test kits and that we didn't have enough. Luckily, we had about 100 test kits in our campus health facility. But I, I went to our virologist and the dean of our medical school, who happens to be a virologist who became a uh, world-renowned uh, abdominal transplant surgeon, and, uh, and said, you know, this can't be that hard. It's basically a Q-tip with a little reagent and a plastic tube, and you send it somewhere and you get it analyzed. We quickly had some friends who had been doing this work uh, for transplant centers all across the uh, country, a private lab that we, uh, over last weekend, weekend before last, we, we got a commitment from them to run our test, but we didn't have the kits past that hundred. And I didn't know if we were gonna have a thousand or 2000 students coming in and flooding uh, campus health. Luckily, it's only about five or 600 students. And, uh, as Liesl said, we've, done, we've been able to do all the tests that we've needed to do. Mm. But we quickly went to work in our virologists, and we've got some absolutely world-class uh, virologists, one of which is, uh, we, we can send out a, a, a link, but uh, he's called Dr. Germ. Uh, and he spent a long time at Baylor College of Health and uh, Baylor College of Medicine in, in Houston. We were lucky enough that uh, he chose to bring his talents to Tucson at University of Arizona. Um, we started working on uh, being able to produce these kits, and I, I'm, I'm really proud of what was done there. Uh, moreover, um, you know, I used to pretend to be a doctor. Well, I actually was a heart surgeon at one time. Uh, but we need real experts like Tony Fauci, uh, who understand the biology of viruses, and we are blessed to have uh, so many individuals here at the University of Arizona who quickly came and said, you know, uh, this is gonna be a big deal. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it's gonna be a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've, we've derived immense benefit from our local expertise, not only being able to uh, help us with policy decisions, but to, to develop these uh, uh, kits for testing and even to help us to provi provide these kits to uh, to some uh, people who couldn't get the kits. We're, we're also blessed to have as our clinical partner Banner Health, which is the seventh largest healthcare delivery system in the country. Uh, and we've worked very closely and, and uh, well with them collaboratively uh, around um, our medical students, our nursing school students, public health students, pharmacy students. We, we also derive immense benefit from having one of the top public health schools in the country. So all of us have come together 
Uh, it's been long days. You know, you would think, well, you can do everything from home. It's sort of like a vacation. Uh, try sitting in front of Zoom, you know, 12 hours a day. It's but intense. Bobby, our students are trying that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's they intense. are. I'm, I'm speaking to their families, but because yeah. uh, uh, I think there are a lot of parents on here. It's intense it's because intense. there's nothing like being face to face and uh, seeing each other. So um, uh, we, we're, we're really blessed to have so many great scientists, so many uh, great healthcare providers that we can all come together and work with our mayor and our uh, board of supervisors and uh, health department. Um, and, and as I said at the outset, we've been really lucky in Arizona not to have as many cases. Right. If there's one, one uh, briefing, of course, you should watch the, uh, the White House briefing and listen very carefully to what uh, Dr. Fauci is saying. Uh, it, it's somewhat entertaining. If you really want to watch a briefing, watch Governor Cuomo from New York every, every morning. He has slides. He knows what he's talking about. He's on top of it. Uh, and, you know, I heard him say yesterday, uh, ground Zero is in New York. Uh, they are the canary in the coal mine. And what's happening in New York is going to happen all the way across the country. So the sooner we all practice what we're supposed to do in terms of isolation, washing our hands, staying away from people, the sooner we're going to uh, get control of this. So Bobby, can I pick up on that yeah, for a minute? Yeah, sure. Um, tying together lots of the thoughts that you just had and prompted by questions that we've got from families asking about how are we uh, managing the disease. Let me um, just tell a great story, which is in our School of Public Health, we have a team um, that's already established that uh, tracks infectious diseases. And what we're doing is partnering with the county to make sure that our team pivots all its work to virtual uh, me mechanisms so that they can interview uh, people who've tested positive for COVID-19 about who all their contacts were in their workplace, in their community, in their homes, and then reach out and, con and connect with those individuals that might have come in contact with somebody infected and tell them to take special care. I'm so proud of the faculty and staff and students that are building this, uh, building out, rapidly expanding our SAFER program. You can look it up online, S-A-F-E-R, uh, program to serve the community and make sure that we are part of the solution. We are helping to track the disease as it moves through the community and warn people that, have might, that may have come in contact with people to keep themselves especially isolated because of that risk. Um, a related question that we've had come in relates to how do we get people out of the dorms without putting them at risk of infection. Our dormitory leadership has been asking people to phone and set up an appointment for when they're gonna come into the dorms so that we can keep family groups separated by floor, by entrance and so on, so that we never have a crowd situation build up as we're trying to move people out of the dorms. We have fabulous leadership in public health to help um, us navigate this process and that is informing all of the decisions that we're making. Um, another can can one, I ask a question go about for it. that? Um, so every student I meet, I always give my cell phone number to, and luckily nobody's ever abused that, but all of you have your, my cell phone number out there, just call me up. Yeah. I'll go and pack your stuff up and we'll ship it to you. Is there a service like that? Absolutely. Of Is course really? we have it. We have a service, it's all online. You can go online and tell us you would like us to pack your things up and store them, and we absolutely will. Perfect. Yeah. So um, let me uh, go to another question that's kind of related, which is a question about internships and um, clinical placements and other types of experiential learning that our students do out in the community to practice the skills and use the knowledge that they need as they launch towards uh, graduation um, in their particular degrees. We have asked that no, none of these experiences proceed anymore with any face-to-face -face modality. And that's making students anxious because in some degree programs, those clinical hours, those practicums, those placements count towards your degree. We have worked with every one of the deans of our colleges and with every program director to make sure that this disruption to your experiential learning will not disrupt your time to degree. 
our faculty are working to replace those experiences with similar high quality learning experiences and we are guaranteeing that the fact that you can't do your clinical rotation, your internship, whatever it is that you had planned, we are absolutely working towards making sure that that will not disrupt your time to degree. And that also is taking an enormous amount of creativity from faculty across the university. Um, but we believe it's tremendously important that our students are not put at risk by being in uh, placements that involve face-to-face -face engagement. And let me say, in many cases, the host sites have been wonderful partners and have figured out a work from home solution for our students who are on placement with them, um, just as uh, we've asked our own staff and faculty to do. So that's an important point as well. Um, let me see, was there one last question coming in? Um, do, 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 oh, pass fail, Bobby, this is such an important topic. The university made a decision uh, and uh, there was a lot of discussion with Bobby and me and the whole senior leadership team at the university and all the deans of the colleges to think about what do we do to recognize that many of our students are going to really struggle with adapting to all online teaching but also their home lives are very different from what they were before coronavirus came along. Uh, people now have their children at home. They're worried about their financial security. If, for example, they had a job in retail to help them keep body and soul together while they were studying and that retail job has gone away. Many, many concerns. What we've done as a campus is introduce a pass-fail option so that all of our students can choose the pass-fail option in any course if they feel that that would be better for them. The pass-fail option doesn't, um, d will not count towards their GPA but we wanted to give the students the ability to make that choice. Importantly, if you choose pass-fail, a passing grade will still be sufficient for you to uh, move into any other degree. It'll be acceptable as a, um, to meet a prerequisite requirement for any degree program. That's important. There's a question here that um, says that an individual faculty member is saying that his class is not going to pass-fail. In fact, it is the choice of the students with one exception, which is in a couple of cases, we have a whole degree programs have decided to go to pass fail. And this is particularly uh, relevant in the law, um, but um, obviously that's been communicated separately to the students that are in those degree programs. But in general, our students need to know it's their choice, whether they go to pass fail and that they will, we will keep communicating with them and their advisors are happy to talk to them about who exactly, um, oh sorry, who exactly should uh, think about taking the pass-fail option. So please talk to your advisors before you make that decision, but we want to make sure that every student knows that the decision is yours, except for a couple of degree programs. Very good. So, I think, Bobby, yeah, it, it do you looks, want to say a few final words? We're yeah, probably I, exhausting people here. Well, I, we probably are, but I thought we were just getting started. There's so much <laughs> to talk about. But our, uh, our producers, our directors are saying it's time to cut it, cut it short. Um, and I, I've really enjoyed this, Liesl. I, I know you're well. a veteran and you're a Facebook yeah. uh, live star. <laughs> From last uh, week. <laughs> well, but your, your stars only continue to rise. And I really appreciate, as I've told you many times, uh, uh, the incredible decision for you and James to move your family and, and you. come here to the University of Arizona. You didn't As promise you me see. this, Bobby. Well, <laughs> I didn't know about this. But it, it's a great it, honor to be here. There is no question. It's just a delight to be part of the University of Arizona Wildcat family. And, and as you can tell, uh, you know, I, I never quite got how to say schedule. Uh, but oh. she's not from around these parts. Not from uh, around she's these from parts. Australia. But we are a global community. We Bobby. are a global community, <laughs> but I've got to learn how to say schedule better Sorry. than schedule. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just wanted to say a few, a few final words. And by the way, uh, she's from Perth, and I told her that, that Tucson looks a lot more like Perth than Buffalo. It does. I can't imagine it being does. in Buffalo, although she loved her time in Buffalo. I and, did. It's beautiful if you like lots of snow. And green, very green, green. in the summer. It's white most of the time. Oh, no, it's not. There's so much snow. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's on a serious note, finishing off, thank you all for joining us. I, I hope uh, 
I get invited back to do this, but Lisa will probably be doing more Facebook Lives with more interesting people than me uh, because it's been great. Uh, uh, Betsy Cantwell runs our research operation. Yep. We've got Mike Abacasis and Mike Dake in Health Sciences. We've got, I think, just having some of these virologists, some of our epidemiologists, public exactly. health people, um, or even uh, John Pollock. I, I haven't been able to see what he posted, but uh, he's teaching an online course and he gave an update about how his course was going. There's so much material and everybody's getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of all of you who are not here with us in beautiful Tucson. Uh, we want you to come back, students and families, to visit your students here. Uh, and please take this seriously. There was something I was reading about how to make your home, the place that you're uh, isolating in, uh, more of a health refuge. Uh, I think that's really good advice. It's very hard to do because you get stir crazy. Uh, many people uh, have anxiety about uh, their physical health, where this is going, what it's gonna mean for our country, the economy, maybe your own job. Our students, many of our students have jobs. We've tried to continue to support uh, our student workers because I meet so many students who work two jobs to just be able to get, come to the university and, and, and get their education. Mm -hmm. uh, but try, uh, I'd say the, the biggest thing I would encourage people to do is get as much sleep and rest as possible. The most mm -hmm. important performing enhancing activity you can do is sleep. But exercise with sleep is very good. Even uh, better. Even better. Even better. Manage your stress the yeah. best you can, right. either through meditation, uh, through yoga. Uh, try to eat well. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do that. I've been trying to lose weight since I took this job because I go out to dinner almost every night and uh, that's not exactly conducive to the weight line. So I'm trying to, to do things to, uh, to manage my stress and anxiety level through all of this. As you can imagine, we've got uh, a lot of things that we need to do every day. And, uh, you know, one of my friends used to say, I said, how do you run this? major. It was actually the CEO of Raytheon, uh, 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 the, the, the big Raytheon in Boston. Uh, and, and he said, 25-8. There's just not enough hours in the day, but we're all working really hard to try to keep the university uh, going full speed ahead, uh, to deliver the, uh, the learning materials that the students need to be successful. We're trying to get to the end of this term get through summer term and be willing, uh, be ready and willing to uh, accept you all back on campus. So stay healthy out there, wash your hands, stay away from people, only go out when necessary, <laughs> try to manage your stress, uh, know your numbers, uh, practice good healthy policies and please, please stay safe. Uh, we've got an incredible determining, uh, determination spirit here and as we say at the University of Arizona, we all need to just come together and bear down and we're gonna get through this. Thank you all for tuning in today. Liesl, thank you for Absolutely. allowing me to be the, the guest, uh, the guest <laughs> commentator here. So you thank are you. the main game, Bobby. There's no question. People are here to see you. There's no question. Very good.